back. We are back with game two of the scrim of ESC versus Nascordia. And uh, we talked a bit about game one after the game ended, but we're going to go right into the pro draft for game two. So we got pro draft up on screen now. We have Nascordia on blue side and Emporia on red side. We've already got a couple of bands here. We've got um, <clears throat> We've got uh, Miss Cordia picking the swing from ESU, which is interesting, trying to pull that away from them. Also, Yeah, another interesting part to me is the, the Sivir band coming out from Miss Cordia. And they're just, it, it looks like they're just taking ESU's team <laughs> at this point with the Swain and the Pantheon coming out. Well, how successful it was, and they want to try it out for themselves. Maybe quite an interesting uh, decision trying to force ESU off of the comfort pick while also... Uh, trying to ban out as much as they can. Oh, I agree. And I'm wondering... Uh, oh, it looks like the roles have swapped for this game, actually. And Easy Kill will be in the top lane. Aspian will be in the jungle. Nate Crusade will be mid. Autolet will be bot. And Reverse Bear Trap will be support for ESC this game. So that kind of explains a little bit of, about these picks here. These are still pretty comfortable picks for Emporia State. Um, for the roles they've selected, uh, Easy Kill loves his Gragas top. Ella has um, been spending a lot of time playing Isa in the ACC, which makes sense with how many buffs she's gotten over this season. She's becoming a really strong pick for uh, this kind of mid to level, I would say. No, I agree, and it it kind of looks to me like Miss Cordia. They're gonna come out with, you know, a tankier comp yet again. I'm guessing the Swain. Might be support. It could be mid. Uh, if that's the case, uh, I like it a lot more than a Galio pick. I feel like having that instant team fight champ is good. Uh, just better than Galio. Galio just kind of struggles uh, if he gets behind. Swain is kind of. I mean, I don't know. I just prefer Swain out of the two. They kind of do the same job, but Swain is just higher damage output. Wayne definitely has more tools in this kit to sort of uh, carry a game on his own. Galio feels more like the, the act, kind of like the secondary support in that mid lane. He more so helps with set, setting stuff up for his jungler. He doesn't really do as much by himself, or doesn't have as easy of a time getting things by himself compared to a Swain. And here we see a. No, uh, yeah, I agree. And I feel like a, a big problem last game with the Galio is just uh, nobody on his team really got ahead early. He didn't really have anyone to support until. Uh, Emporia State gave gave them the opportunity to let the Udyr get a few kills. Um, and farming is just not a huge priority on the Galio. To where on Swain, you know, wave clear is, is a lot easier. With Galio, it's really only easy to get the casters. But with Swain, you just... You queue the wave twice, and it's it's dead, so... Especially with those uh, Swain Q buffs they get kind of mid-season, it helps helps a lot more with that. I agree, and this is a very interesting pick coming out from Poria State. Oh, looks like, uh, looks like we have a Tristana. It might might end up in the mid lane here. We know Naker said uh, originally is an AD carry main, uh, switched to top to play more of a supportive tank role, but his you know his mid lane pool we haven't really seen this before, <laughs> and so I'm thinking the Tristana mm -hmm. will be the the lock for him. Yeah, I think I'll take credit for that pick. I know whenever uh, I, I try to. <laughs> so I hate to interrupt, but. <laughs> oh. I'm. Yeah. I'm confused. Uh, don't really know what we're going to see out of the bot lane from Miss Cordia here. And that kind of will determine where every other champion on their team goes. I'm thinking it's a Swain Pantheon combination. But then again. <clears throat> oh, Master Yi from. For the state, so very, very interesting team comps from both teams. It's going to be a way different game compared to game two, I think, or game one, I think. Yeah, you know, I thought game one was was more of a different kind of game, but it turns out game two, we're just letting it all loose. I mean, when's the last time, you know, in a competitive setting, you've seen? And I know this is a scrim, but I mean, a master Yi. Uh, Gwen Viego or got no traditional ADC coming out and it just feels like we're gonna have a lot of fun this game. If we had no time to talk in between plays last game, 
It's probably not going to get any better this game. And my voice is probably going to get very hoarse this game. We got to keep hydrating because this, this is going to be an action-packed one for sure. Uh, big things I'm looking at for Miss Cordia is that they have a very skirmishy team comp on my last game. You know, the Udyr and the Gallia do some skirmishing, but not as much the, the bot lane. But it appears as if they've switched their whole strategy into trying to to duel with Emporia State. Yeah, it looks like a lot of what Miscreant wants to do here is just go for that, go for those fights and just try to match match ESU blow for blow. Not really, not really uh, necessarily, not necessarily you know outdo them in terms of rotations or or comps or or. Uh, macro but just try to outplay them and uh, beat them down with raw damage with the, between like the ergot the viego the gwen the swing the pantheon we'll, we'll see how it pans out for them especially that bot lane that early bot lane how they play that early game into a morgana kaiso would be very key i agree and i think a lot of it could come out with the uh, you know if the viego and the team fights does get that one kill you know everyone knows that champion can just snowball a team fight like no other. The only comparison really I'd give it is Master E, which Emporia State has drafted. And I feel like, you know, that that is one of the very few champions in League of Legends where you don't need a team as long as you've got farm. You know, you you can really 1v9 the game. I think uh, early game will be we'll be looking at bot lane a lot and then once we kind of shift into the mid and late game we'll be looking a lot at how Diego and Master Yi feels 5v5 or just the skirmishes who can start popping off the earliest no I, I agree 100% and I also think that you know if the, Miss Cordia kind of has the same problem here where if they let Emporia State's team get ahead early it's going to look real rough for them they have three Late game carries on their team, uh, in the Yi, Kristana, and Kaisa. Uh, I know Easy Kill. You know he's he's that kind of guy where he's going to build full damage Gragas too. And, and if they let Emporia State get out of control early here, it's going to be tough keeping up with that damage. Yeah, the Gragas and the Morgana will definitely provide enough kind of without having any sort of like range AD carry to. to supply extra damage while you're kind of in these skirmishes uh it might be hard for miss miss cordia to get onto the kaisa because late game kaisa will shred that team regardless of how tanky your ergot is or or uh how much you know drain tank uh the swain is uh, kaisa will just shred through all of it the only exception being sume if you know uh, if sume can get that that w shield off in time i think i think it's w right the, uh, Veil. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but even then, you know, you all just that is kind of the thing. It. it feels like Miss Cordia, you know, they they're just gonna have to beg for Emporia to walk into them. Which, you know, with Emporia's playstyle, that is something that happens pretty often. You know, they get greedy, they chase, they want more, uh, and it feels like, you know, Miss Cordia's team is not one you want to fight melee range with. <laughs> um. You know, the second that you get too close to an Urgot or a Pantheon, Viego, Gwen, Sway, all of them, it, it's just, I'm really curious to see how this one will play out. If Miss Cordia can limit a lot of their early mistakes that they had in game one, I think with their comp, they would be in great shape in the Emporia State's play style. Be in game very shortly here in the next uh, 30 seconds. We'll be able to see how this uh, game shakes out. I'm really curious to see. I know that Emporia State is very fond of the invade. I'm surprised we didn't see it last game. I know that they didn't really have the best uh, level one for an invade. They they'd be good in a fight, but catching somebody out. But this time you have you know Morgana Q, and if you get hit by one of those at level one, you're you're done. It's it's over. Going to. Uh... Gragas barrel really bad if they decide to do it. I'll say uh, I'm not so surprised they didn't do it last game. I mean a little bit since it is a scrim. It's what back and stuff like this. But with with Aspie and Man, I know Aspie and being more of like a safety deck. I, I definitely 
in the comms I can I can hear Ezekiel just being like, Yes, we need to get in there. We need to get in there. I want in there. I want in there. Hundred <laughs> percent. Then May Crusade and Autolit Gun probably right there with them. You know, but but now that Aspian is on this greedier pick, I can see him even, you know, wanting to get in there, try and get some early gold. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, and you can yeah, already yeah. see in the all chat that there's there's yeah. a little bit of <laughs> I wouldn't even call it banter, just shock of Miss Cordia's team comp here. Here we see, like like you're saying, uh, ESU is pinging for the for doing the the, the, the invade. Strat, invade. Like I'm not sure. Battle. I'm not sure if we can see that on the stream yet. Um, oh yes, the um, apologies. The... But it's okay. You guys haven't missed anything yet. Uh, it looks like Emporia State's getting in position for their their token bot lane invade. Yep. And I don't believe they were spotted out. Uh, looks like the Swain is just kind of hovering around the buff. Yeah, it wasn't really fast enough getting to that that bot push. It's going to be really disastrous if gone mostly unnoticed even now ESU's Whoa. managed to manage to skirt through all vision nope. they see the pantheon oh, here the root comes to... out just a little we'll see that face. spot gets me every time because around those dragon pits in rift herald um the terrain seems a bit 3d you know what i'm saying like it's the angle seems off a little bit yeah a lot of uh there's a lot of regions on the map that have that kind of problem where they are like I think they're actually 3D too, where it's like if you throw something up a little bit, it'll go a little bit higher than you're thinking. So you may trading a bit with Nate Crusade here, eating a bunch of that trick. But actually, yeah, the Glen mid is um interesting pick into the interest on it. I agree. I think that at level six, uh the Gwen can really punish if Nate Crusade were to overextend. But until then, this this lane is really gonna be dominated by the Tristana. And it looks like we already have some fighting top here. Yeah, it looks like Ezekiel, Ezekiel begging for his life. <laughs> He's getting a little too aggro there. You, you expect the uh, the bot lane to be worried seeing the action, but it's actually uh, some of the, uh, the side lanes that we're seeing a lot of combat going on. There's one thing about Ezekiel. He he cannot avoid yeah. conflict. He loves <laughs> fighting. But it looks like he could go down here pretty easily. Go boy gets a, a stun there. Miss follows up with the hook, Rich Airtop burning from Ignite. Can Doughboy get the spear, but it's just not enough damage. But Doughboy does have oh, lethal tempo. Is still level 1 trying to trade back onto this. Trying flashing. really hard, flashing, getting stunned and rooted. Drops the cleanse a little too early. Odella is in quite dire straits now, while Miss just autos down Odella. Oh, and the claw Ooh. gets Odella. That was very ambitious from Odella's part. Almost worked out. This for is it. this is kind of the saving grace for the Gwen mid is having that W ability to kind of negate some of the Tristana damage. But it's she's still taking a beating, unfortunately. I think the big uh, thing for I think the big thing for Sume with the Gwen is that you want to try to save that hollow that hollowed uh, ground for when the W from Tristana comes up. That is her only burst. And this is going to look to try to trade with Aspian here. We see actually Miscreet getting the scuttle crab there from Aspian. Meanwhile, Nate Crusade is looking a bit, just kind of matching suit. Oh, definitely, so. yeah. I didn't expect a, a ton of noise to come out from the jungle. You know, Master E is a very farm to level 6 kind of champion, and then look for fights. Um, oh. Gwen's running out of mana here, and it's yeah. just... Sitting in, sitting in the, uh, or letting Nate Crusade kind of sit in that shroud with you. Didn't really, didn't really do its job of uh, deflecting that damage. No, exactly. And what I'm looking for here is to see what uh, the Viego's first move will be outside of the jungle, whether he's going to look to keep applying pressure bar or try and get a different lane ahead here. Yeah, uh, from personal that, experience, say, I know that... Oh. Trying to go for a dive for Zume, but the bomb just didn't get that last auto attack off. Mystery is kind of waiting in the ramparts. Might be looking to flash on a Nate Crusade, getting the Q off. And stun off. Oh, I mean, Aspian diving Sume in return. Luckily, Nick, Nick Saint has exhaust for it. Yeah, that was just, you know, I guess I'll eat my words because the junglers <laughs> both getting pretty active here, yeah. really. Um, 
the one thing I want to see the Gwen do is try and freeze into the Tristana. Because Tristana can't help but push the wave with her passive. Mm -hmm. and, and if you get, you know, a squishier character mid, you just ping your jungler. Yeah, that's one saving that. grace for anyone into a Tristana mid is that Tristana mid just doesn't really have much wing control. Bear Trap getting the stun, eating the W from Kaisa has a lot of poke coming on a miss there. Not really what you want in this kill heavy lane. No, not at all, but it looks like he has a health potion, so he'll take a break, drink that, and, you know, probably look at it for another uh, skirmish here, because it's only a matter of time before the Kai'Sa will just be able to kill them both with one black shield. Yeah, Wib's not really in a great spot for them either, so let's see how they have to respond out there. Deke going for another sneaky little trade here, being a tough, funny little guy. Yeah, the thing about the Gragas top is that, in theory, you should never lose a trade because you you always have three abilities to proc your phase rush and then you just run away. Yeah, the I mean, top laner sitting level six. It's not a lane where you expect much action. I'd say it's it's something you expect to be a lot really calmer lane, especially compared to what else doing on the map. Here's the Doughboy getting caught by the. That there. Oh, Nick said going in on Sume, sitting in the shroud with it, eating ignite, eating the cues. But Nick said has alt, knocking Nume Sume back to base. Yeah, I think if the Gwen just waited a little longer until she also had the level six, it would have been a very different fight there. You yeah. can see that Nick said when he jumps straight on, just you know, he gets poked out a little bit. Yeah, he does eat a lot of damage from that those Q procs and uh, Gwyn procking her passive over and over again. Having the alt too, that alt can really just uh, sustain Gwen in, in any sort of like burst that she's uh, thinking. So we'll see. Maybe. I agree. And something very interesting in the top lane is that oh, oh. alt from Ezekiel. If, if the Urgot could manage to dash at the Gragas at the same time that he's trying to body slam him, he'll just cancel the Gragas completely. Uh, and you know, that's, that's the whole thing with Gragas is that if you can't get the, the E off, you're not going to have a very favorable trade. Yeah, we see Ezekiel is kind of struggling a bit. He's a bit less mana than Saintly Comic. Saintly Comic also having a bit of a push here, kind of having a bit of free reign on the, on the wave for the time being. And if we look at, uh, the other lanes too are kind of, uh, Z bot lane. Uh, Doughboy and Miss already feeling a bit of pressure, not really being able to, or not not being, only being a little bit successful with one kill early. It's making it kind of hard for them to get that engage on uh, on the bot lane like they want. Yeah, you can see in Porgy State's bot lane, you know, they realized, hey, uh, we need to try and not fight as much early. Just let the Kaisa farm, and uh, eventually she will be strong enough to to one v two with one Morgana shield. And it looks like we have some uh, brewing around Dragon Pit here. We see. It looks like a one for one happened in the top lane. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, right under our noses, it would appear. Yeah. Right under our noses, it looked like the Urgot was was diving Ezekiel and uh, ended up to get the trade back <laughs> with the turret. I mean, while both teams are dancing for the dragon, Sime being a bit does drop all. Doughboy flashes in. On Odella, blocking a lot of damage from that Q. Sume misses it because of Aspian's uh, Q right there. But Aspian can't quite heal enough. Nixay getting the alt off on Sume. Meanwhile, Viego follows Nakersade all the way inside. Barely not enough damage. Almost gets it off. Does get the invuln off. And Miss Cordia walks away with the W on this one. Although Miss Cordia might get punished for, you know, does get a lot of HP oh. from that. Oh, not, not enough. That HP boost from uh, the Toad, helping him out quite a bit. Well, that's just kind of what I was mentioning in the draft, is that if Viego can get going in one of these one of these fights, you know, it's going to turn out very well for Miscordia. You know, he could just keep going. And that is a character that you do want to get a lot of kills on, because if Viego gets strong, it makes it very hard. Meanwhile, Ezekiel trying to fight team. with Saintly Comic, he fortunately got caught up by the Urgot and ate a bunch of auto attacks from, from the grab right there. Even though he had body slam up, he's going to body slam again. Getting St. Leconic as low as he is. Dodges the grab barely, but he is still tanking auto attacks. And has to flash away and walk away from that engagement. 
Yeah, honestly, I think Urat could have thrown out his ultimate there, and then it would have just been the end of the story, but we'll see what happens. Ezekiel, yes, he known is. for his greed, is still here farming. Yeah, he's not backing off this wave at all. It might might be the doom of him if he's not careful. And while Nakerse pushing up, while Sume comes in from behind, but Nakerse does have W, so he is uh, not in any trouble at the moment. Ezekiel's trying to ping for a being for possibly a gank here, knowing that Sidley Comic wants to get the alt off on him, maybe trying to bait Sidley Comic into a trade that he doesn't. It care. looks like Aspian is here, and he's just gonna walk straight in. Uh, well, comes down from Aspian, but belly drop does get to him right before the grab does. Sidley Comic does is able to flash away barely, and the alt barely whizzes past both of them. Even though, ooh, miscreant oh. here for the counter gank. The alt comes down from him. The both flashes from both junglers. Aspian is so low. Oh, and the Q dodge is phenomenal. But Miscreant, oh, barely not able to get the Q off. He died in alpha. Dume here trying to finally up. deal with this fat man. Ignite is burning, but Sume does not have another charge of alt for it. We'll see. I can see Sume trying to make some sort of play here, and either getting punished for it or rewarded. But yeah, as you can see, you know, with the, the team comp difference, um, Discordia is a lot better in these early skirmishes than they were uh, in game one. And it might just be that they're more comfortable. Um, you. Oh, it looks like he I mean, does land it, but oh, the barrel is a little too slow. So he made his auto attack. Nicks Ezekiel in the bud. And this is, this is the main of Emporia State, you know, they're just... The greed, uh, Ezekiel just can't help himself. He sees the, he sees the, you know, he sees the enemy going at 200 HP. It doesn't matter that he has 200 HP. He, he sees the visions in his mind and he goes for it. Yeah, we'll say the Morgana pick here for this bot lane. It's, you couldn't ask for a better one. Because if Autolite Gun ever gets caught, I mean, he is... Yeah, He's also trap. running the cleanse, you know, reverse bear trap. We'll just put the shield on and That's auto gun. We'll just be able to press E and run away. It's about the, the best uh, best pick you could have had for this spotlight, even though they... Oh, no boy, driving it. Ooh, reverse there it bear is again. trap. Yeah, it's... Very quick on the black shield from reverse bear trap. Great job. I think if Miss Cordia just... The bot lane here tried to focus the Morgana instead. They could probably get more done, but you can see auto gun will just play in front of her. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, Adelaide's very good at, at understanding what his role was in this situation. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it looks like, oh, we got something going on top here. Aspian trying to beat down on this uh, unsaintly comic is going to get the kill. It looks like Ezekiel did fall for that before the... Yeah, he did. So, he at least coming through, now. getting the one-for-one. One. Um, Aspian's got three kills already, a Blade of the Rune King, you know, he's... He's feeling pretty good on this Master Yi here. Um, yeah, I think that if he keeps pacing like this, he'll be able to, to do a lot of work in his fights. Yeah, if Miscordia is not careful, then the uh, Master Yi can start becoming more of a problem, even though you've seen earlier in this game, Miscreant's uh, done a lot of <clears throat> done a lot and beaten Aspian earlier in trades. If he gets too many items, it could be really bad. Doughboy tried to get a stun off, but Here's the hook really doesn't land. Miss lands the binding. The ult comes down. They're getting really low. They're soaking a lot of damage. Miscreant ults, but they have bear. Miscreant comes in with the ultimate. Throws out the binding, but just takes the kill and goes. So I'm not careful three. here. Meanwhile. Yeah, ESU securing the hero top lane. So Miscreant trying to keep off Saintly Comic from this engagement. So uh, I, I guess. What were your thoughts on that sort of uh, skirmish and bot lane that we saw? You know, I think that Emporia State, they just kind of forgot about the Swain ult. Uh, I think that, you know, a huge part of the Swain rework is when he was able to do full damage with his his ultimate uh, blast uh, immediately and not have to, to save it up. So I think they they didn't respect the damage output from Swain there. Yeah, it seems that, uh, you know, we saw the sort of panic flash from Odellet right there. It did save him, but it was it was a use of flash, but otherwise 
to walk away from that, that tree earlier. Oh, it looks like we're seeing an alt from uh, Pantheon here from Doughboy. Salty Comic is running at Ezekiel. He is getting burned. Ezekiel just oh, wants to go deeper in enemy he's, territory he's, here. He's got nowhere to run, though. Miscreant's waiting on the other side. And he's going to claim Gragas for himself. Another kill yeah, and this, for the this jungle. Viego is getting it's, a bit out of hand here. This is becoming a, this is going to quickly turn into a war of the junglers. We have to see who can get ahead faster. Is it going to be the Master Yi with the attack speed, or is it going to be Miscreant with all the resets in the world? I like the... The supporting cast around the Master Yi more, but at the, at the moment, it feels like, you know, Viego is just everywhere he needs to be, picking up easy kills, um, he's farming pretty well, you know, he's pretty even on objectives, only down to Rift Heralds. He picked up but... an easy kill, all right. Yeah, he did indeed. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think now that Kaisa's got the Kraken Slayer, the bot lane is going to be a very one-sided fight. Yeah, we, uh, it seems like Mist and uh, Doughboy kind of missed uh, their window. And it looks like Doughboy kind of recognized that a bit. It looks like we're seeing a little bit of engagement here. He's going to eat a bunch of tower shots from Aspian. Tsume, can Tsume help out at all here? Does lo not look like it. Aspian going to pick up a double kill. Very nasty. And I think that play right there is going to be a game changer. I think, you know, Miss Cordia just lost a lot of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They also lost steam in their engine, is how I would. How I would yes, it. yes. You know they were rolling, and that's a quick way to stop it. And the master Yi getting both of them, especially. I mean, that's not helpful for anyone on Miscordia's side. Yeah, now um, he's now he's kind of matching. Uh, it looks like Stanley is going to flash onto Adela. Barely misses the hook. Adela alts to get the shield, but he's still taking a lot of autos, but does back away from that. Yeah, somehow gets out of that one there. I think that. Uh, Urgot must have missed his alts, and uh, if he hits that, that's a, that's a dead guy. Okay, but... Oh, looks like he grabs the Crusade. Make Crusade, Crusade just eating it. The, the, the true savior. Meanwhile, reverse bear trap going for the one v one onto the mist here. Does break the tether and it's just running down at it. The claw comes out. Reverse bear trap, not able to do much. But, but the tower, tower, the tower. The tower. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, Ezekiel man. is chasing down Sume top. I mean. <laughs> Now Discord. we get some action. It only uh, took about 15 minutes, but now we're here. Yeah, this game's a little uh, bit all over yes. the place. You, you can go, see Emporia State. I know, you see Emporia State yeah. just trying to make moves everywhere. You got the Herald being dropped mid. Miscreants trying to look to do something with Doughboy, but the ult is a little bit misplaced. It doesn't really catch out the issue like they want it to. And honestly, I think if they did stop the Tristana there, that it just would have gone poorly for them with the Master E full health with ult right around the corner. Oh, Sume is kind of in trouble. Ooh. Ooh. And River Frost is coming because he oh. gets burning from tower. Oh, and he oh, doesn't. Oh, man. He just. Sume just walks that, away. That yeah. one, you just. You kind of just got to feel bad for Ezekiel. You know, uh, he thought he dropped uh, the tower. Aspian right is feeling quite bad indeed because he is alting for the kill. He said, don't worry. Do he flashes even. He oh, flashes. my goodness. Don't worry, brother. I got you. I will be the janitor today. Oh, man, this game is so all over the place in the <laughs> oh. last three minutes. Yeah, that was a lot of a lot of actions just happening all over the map. Making, making me wish we had that. Oh, Aspian trying to match Miscreant in the 1v1. Oh, and the Q dodges Miscreant. Oh, great play by Aspian there. Dodges You've seen Poria. They, they were in a bad spot for just a second, but... You know they're they're back up almost two thousand gold now just from a few plays that went well for them, yeah, and this is kind of oh, the. It looks like, it looks like uh, Miss Miss Cordia is trying to do even more stuff here with Saintly Comic and Doughboy, going for uh, getting the the fear off onto Adelit, but Adelit does have cleanse. He's a little bit late there. Can Doughboy match enough of damage? It won't look like it with the E being a little bit misplaced, trying to flash away, but but you can't flash away from Kaisa passive. Yeah, no, and I mean, this is kind of looking like game one again, where every trade that Miss Cordia gets, Emporia State matches, and then some, you know, they, they're they taking advantage, uh, they're finding, you know, picks and kills where there shouldn't be. Yeah, it's not, it's not looking really good for Miss Cordia at the moment, it seems like they're getting punished for a lot. Sume right here, in fact, being ulted by Gragas right back into the mix of it, although barely not Ooh. enough to take Ezekiel. Can Miss Cordia catch up, it, it might... 
maybe maybe not we'll see here he does have a lot in his kit to get away Ezekiel finally feeling himself a little bit on the Gragas there, <laughs> going for the, the 1v1. I mean, he's been uh, doing it quite a bit so far. Well, winning the 1v1, winning I should the one say. Yeah, win, win, winning, yeah. That, Not that's the most story. impressive scoreline I've seen. But, you know, <laughs> he, he seems to always kind of find a way to turn it around. But on the other hand, this Urgot seems like he could be a problem for Emporia State, especially if... Uh, he's definitely acting like a problem with how, with how aggressive he's been playing these Oh, yeah. If, if they get the Master oh, E locked... Oh, boy, oh. getting the lock on on Nature State, but he does get the jump off. He's not going to... State's still taking a lot of damage there. They did use a lot of resources. Straight. Yeah, there was a lot of resources to push Nature State out. Will it be enough for Discordia to possibly secure this dragon? They don't have Sume in this fight. It, it's going to be a... Four It'll be uh, 4v4 possible, 5v5 if Nick Shade doesn't leave. He all comes down, Miss is opening up. Doughboy getting the stun in, but Aspion is here to follow up. And they just have too much damage. Emporia exactly. is just doing too much damage at this point. Having multiple Kraken Slayers, having the Master Yi with two items, it's not looking very good for Miss Gordia. It's the, you know, their game plan is that they wanted Emporia to run into them. And now they are, and uh, it looks like Odella is will go down to the to Sume's ult, so they picked up something, but Sume is running back into the fray here. Aspian is ulting, and Sume is slowed, but does have ghost running. Let's we'll see. Maybe it's enough. Oh, nope. Master Yi ult is longer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it just feels like ever since that, that double kill mid play where they took down the jungler and uh, what was it? The support player from uh, yeah, Miscordia. Yeah. It, it just felt like, you know, Master Yi was going to snowball this one and lead his team to a victory here. Yeah, and that, and that kind of war of, uh, of two junglers trying, both trying to find some sort of snowball lead here. Uh, you know, being the jungler and having to give up that double kill to a Master Yi is just, was such a, such a crippling blow. Which yeah, means... it's such a, just a demoralizer yeah. mentally too. You're like, oh man. It's happening. The yeah. one thing that you don't want to. And we've seen just really but, great plays from Aspian, dodging a lot of uh, miscreants uh, hit with, with the uh, Aspian. Oh, might here. walk straight into him here. Yeah, it does not look good for him. He'll not be able to get away. You know, that, that, that shroud will not last. Aspian right wants more. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, here's, this is the... They don't have... Uh, meanwhile, Nature State enough... is fought, fighting Saintly Comic. Saintly Comic. Necrosade, I guess, you know, <laughs> overestimated his damage a little bit there. Yeah, he, he did. I mean, he didn't die for it, so it's still fine. Meanwhile, Odellet's playing the game, that, you know, playing League of Legends. He is pushing mid, reverse bear trap, having to sacrifice her life to make sure Odellet can walk away from this engagement. And this is still running, though. Yeah, I think something very interesting here is Emporia's going to their, you know, we're never all together play style. But I think if they grouped up, you know, there's there's not a whole lot that could be done. But Ezekiel's getting into quite the fight here. Yeah, luckily, Odellet's here to back him up, but... Oh, the Q barely not enough. That was bad news for uh, Sume, having just that little bit of HP on Ezekiel. Is he that, that Gragas passive and that, that Water Drake putting in uh, overtime work for ESU there? I swear, call me crazy, but Ezekiel has to be the luckiest League of Legends player I've ever seen. <laughs> He, he has not gone. He's gone unpunished this season quite quite a lot in this uh, in this scrim. Well, oh, Dell, it's kind of going here. going around the back line here. Let's see what he's he's on a different kind oh, of mission. Right he's now. looking to execute and he does, does not willing to give I up mean, that's just, the slightest bit of blood. Uh, it's just gotta feel so bad, and it looks like Tristana will just jump away here. Yeah. And it, it just feels like the side of Miss Cordia doesn't have enough uh, reliant crowd control for the the very mobile members of Poria State Esports here. Yeah, Saintly Comic, you know, it ha has that, that grab, and it is really devastating, but also it's really slow and can be really predictable. You know, Miscreant has a lot of damage uh, and could burst Aspian, but Aspian is being really smart and only queuing when absolutely necessary. This looks like being cut out here by the hook here. Miscreant is behind, hopefully, to kind of get the, the lower HP member. They're all bearing down. Going on the Morgana. Will they be able to do something against the Yi this time? He does Q in. Gets the kill, but it's not enough. Aspion goes down. Ezekiel is getting chased by Saintly Comic, but should have the tools to get away. Although, 
Although, Miscreant is now Master Yi. The, the jungler is, in fact, the other one, but Odellet has the cue to just... Back in the crusade in the bot lane here, he's just. He's I mean, we've away. seen this one before. He he loves picking ADCs and just and just pushing. Push, push I think away. that the Tristana pick is just even better for that than the Draven here. Oh, definitely having that that bonus range and all the attack speed compared to Draven, it it just does what you want to do a lot better. Odell going for the one v one, certainly comic dodging the grab. Saintly Comic is trying to keep him in range while not taking it too much poke here. To see, he's gonna keep going for it. Saintly Comic, kind of doing a bit of a dance here. Nixon comes on. He does. Saintly Comic unfortunately can't get another hook off. Doughboy goes for the Nola, flush field. He's still going. He's man. still trucking, getting away from everyone. Sume is running around, trying to land the ultimate on people, hoping to tag Looks just like anyone. Probably go down here as well. Yeah, I mean, you have Master Yi bearing down. Yeah, it's tough. I, mean, I, I can see this being just a, a quick Baron and ending for Emporia State, unless they just want to go do it without the Baron. I mean, I mean yeah, even without Baron, they, they have the damage. You know, you have you know, Odell did go back, but he he is quickly running back. You have uh, Tristana and Ezekiel kind of pressuring bot here. You can basically take whatever you want at this point. It's just kind of very interesting to me that no matter what, well, hold on. Oh, well, maybe they might oh, be... they back off. Oh, no, Ezekiel is in the back Ezekiel. with the belly flop from behind. He's always coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Nekuzade going into the middle of the, the mist and miscreant. He is not afraid. No fear. Drops the exhaust. Can't see the Viego, but it should not matter. He just waits it out. Meanwhile, Diego's team is a little slow Run, behind. Run, Crusade, <laughs> run! He's trying to get out of there. Oh, Mist is looking for it. He's trying to find it, but Mist just doesn't have the damage comparatively. You can see flashes the Master and Ghost. Meanwhile, Aspie and Undella are busy doing Baron. Yeah, I mean, they said, you know what, we don't need it before. We'll just, we'll just go get it after. <laughs> and it, it just feels like you know, a theme I've seen with Emporia State is that they, they're really heavy on trading across the map. Like, no matter what you're doing, if you kill a couple of them mid, they're going to have your your side lane turret shoved in. And it feels like there's always somebody getting resources. Nobody's ever not doing something productive. So like, with ESU, we have a lot of... Uh, ESU has a lot of skills when it comes to macro, but not necessarily in a team fight sense. They're they're not very they're not the most team fight oriented, not the most playing around the map oriented. They're more just about uh trying to pull pressure to different sections of the map respectively. Yeah, they're it's very like, reliant oh. oh Doughboy going for the stun on first bear trap, but Doughboy just doesn't quite have the damage to, to knock down. And here bear comes trap Aspian. Yep, there comes Master Yi tickling for another kill. Mist and Miscreant behind Nekusei. Your Nekusei does get hooked, but the bomb is on him and it's just too much damage. Nekusei having a bit too much gold. Ezekiel chasing Miscreant out of the mid lane. Meanwhile, Sume is bearing down on Nekusei with the ultimate, but luckily Nekusei has a reset on his W is able to walk out of that situation. Yeah, you know, it feels like they just kind of let Emporia stay, uh, have everything they wanted, you know? It, I remember at the first Drake fight, you know, that went very well for Miss Cordia. And then ever since then, they haven't tried to, to 5v5 add an objective. Um, they've kind of just let Emporia State have the map, you know, have all these objectives. And I feel like that's really a dagger in their side, you know, just giving away all the resources in the map. Yeah, we saw a lot of really strong rotations from Miss Grant this game. We've seen him um, doing a lot. Basically, like you were saying earlier, Miss Grant uh, managed to be in everywhere he needed to be in the early game. He was always there to sort of catch out DSU when they were going Meanwhile, Doughboy's trying to get one last catch here. Sume going in on reverse bear trap. Does manage to get him. Eating away at Nekusei, but does have the damage. The grab goes on. Nekusei goes down. Meanwhile, your backline is getting shredded by Aspian and Odellet. Miscreant will not have enough to stop this. The damage from both of their carries is just too much. And this was yeah, and, and this is this is the thing because if Miss Cordy has still won that, I mean, look at Gragas top just pushing away. You know, no matter what's happening, there's always somebody doing something on Emporia State's side, and I feel like that's you know a big reason why they're winning games. You know, they're not giving anything for free. 
think uh, I think later that game, a uh, really bold plan from Miscreate trying to take this really kill heavy lane into into bot lane and then picking you know Viego. I mean, I think they picked actually Mastery into Viego, but picking the Viego for your comp. And you have this like really skirmisher heavy team. You have a team that uh, can can fight a lot, but uh, your bot lane really needed to be way more aggressive way earlier. They weren't quite. They had a lot, they had a really hard time. I think you need to be more mindful about that Morgana pick because that Morgana pick really sh uh, disheveled what you wanted to do bot lane. No, I agree. Uh, I just want to give props to Aspen. You know, he he knew what he needed to do that game. He got super ahead on the Master Yi, and he knew that if he did that, uh, no matter what happened, he'd be able to carry the game. Uh, so props to him. And also, Nay Crusade uh, played very well on the Tristana mid. Uh, took a lot of risks that paid off, and you got to have some cojones to do that on an ADC. Yeah, especially uh, just jumping into a Gwen is always, it always feels super risky because you never know when, when uh, those Q cocks are just going to start shredding you out of nowhere. There's a lot of surprise bursts behind it that you're not expecting. Oh, for sure. Okay, well, but yeah, I think that, game. you know, Emporia just got out of hand both games. That's kind of <laughs> just my thoughts on it. It just, it felt like, both of them felt like so like you games where one or two people just got ungodly ahead and were able to translate that to win the game. Yeah, we didn't really see a whole lot of necessarily macro play. I mean, we saw some good uh, split pushing from the O2 side where, you know, it, it, there are points where maybe they were having less less favorable fights, but in exchange of that, they were, like, taking inhibitors, essentially. But that's good, but it doesn't really feel like that was intentional, you know? It, it didn't feel like that was a game plan. They kind of threw up going into it, you know? No, I agree with you. But, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, GG's to both teams. Um, I know this was just a scrim. I hope everyone had fun, and I definitely had fun casting it. I hope, hope everyone you know, who was involved got to learn a lot with all the all the different stuff they tried out. Uh, big props to uh, Miss Cordia for agreeing to do this with us. We appreciate getting this kind of practice in. And uh, to anyone who is watching, uh, I will have a lot of this up on my YouTube. Search up Bob's Cup on YouTube. Uh, try to get the VOD for both games up here in the next, uh, either tonight or tomorrow. Definitely, and also make sure you go follow twitch.tv backslash glicter. <laughs> yes, of course, feel free to... For the best content yourself. on the planet. <laughs> yes, have to, have to self-plug shamelessly. Uh, you know, that's, that's the life. <laughs> but uh, GG's to both teams. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the stream, and uh, hopefully we'll be back doing this again soon.